Okay, and we are live. Welcome everyone. My name is Nikki Lopez of What's Your Elephant, and this is the Art of Justice virtual showcase, open mic community dialogue, featuring a special performance from Alana DaCosta. Um, the, the Art of Justice is a series that I'm um, creating for the LA Lee YMCA with the support of the Community Foundation of Broward. Um, this series started about uh, July and it will culminate in January of 2022. We have multiple art making workshops. We're focusing on four areas of social justice and we are creating art um, led by local artists, having a dialogue. And then we have like what we have today, which is the virtual showcase, where we're showing some of the work that was created um, by the community, along with other artworks from local artists. And we're going to have a discussion. There's an open mic. So if you feel like you're inspired to share a piece, or if you have come already to share a piece, uh, we welcome that and um, we're going to get it started in a minute. Um, again, my name is Nikki Lopez. I am a multidisciplinary artist, social practitioner. I'm a curator. I've worked a number of years off and on with the LA Lee YMCA, um, doing a lot of arts and community engagement program. And that is also, as we're getting into today's topic, we're focusing on the capacity to affect change. And for me, the work that I do is a part of how I express my capacity to affect change in my community by using the arts to have a voice, to give others people the space to create a voice, have their voice heard, and to have discussions that start with art um, but leads to so much more and showing how art can be used as a tool of advocacy. So I'm going to pass it on to Gabe from the LA Lee YMCA to introduce himself, and we're going to get this program started. Hey everyone, I'm really excited to be here and thank you so much for taking this uh, afternoon on a Saturday on the weekend just to share some, some, of these, uh, some of your time with us. We're super excited for this project and really we're looking and talking today about agency and what is it that uh, needs to happen and how do we get inspired to be able to speak up, to be able to say what we think, to be able to create change as we try to really empower ourselves and others to be able to make change. So once again, this is um, the second uh, part of this workshop and the theme this time is agency and Nikki will share with you what is coming because this will be a series that will end next year. So we're super excited to have you. And you are here for a treat, I have to tell you. So wait until you we get to the end and we get to listen to Alana. I'm sure you're gonna be glad that you actually took the time this afternoon and, and joined us. Thank you. And I'm also going to pass it. So, you know, I do have, you know, it says if you want to, what it, there's a quote, it's an African far, um, uh, quote that says, uh, if you want to go far, go alone. If, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So I'm just really um, excited to have a couple of my team members who's helping me to uh, create this. I have Kaula Nuruddin. I don't know if she's online and Alana DaCosta. So um, either one of you all, can you uh, go and just give you a little, a quick introduction? And if you have an example of how you use art as a way uh, for advocacy or uh, to create change, you know, definitely share that. Okay, well, I'll jump in and so Kyla comes on in. Um, my, like Nikki said, my name is Alana DaCosta of Creative Uprising and how I use agency. Um, I think that all of us, each and every one of us on this planet can be an agent of change in our society. However, oftentimes we're conditioned to think that we're powerless. Um, we've been conditioned in, in trauma, just trauma experiences over and over and over again. So how do you um, become an agent in change when you feel powerless? What I do with Creative Uprising is really look at tapping into creative energy, realizing that whether or not you consider yourself an artist or a painter or a musician, you still have creative energy and creative power within your life. You create um, conversations, relationships, memories, you create um, 
your thought processes. And I believe that, you know, by tapping into that energy, all of us and taking responsibility for our own lives and, you know, the frame that we create around our life experience, I think that we can create change, no matter how small it, there is a ripple effect. So um, that's what I do. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if Kaula is here or actually here. Let's see. Okay, so Kaula may not be here. And I do see, so right now we have a few people on the Zoom. We are also live on Facebook under Nikki Lopez Creative. So if you have any comments, questions, uh, definitely feel free to um, uh, throw it in there. I do have a couple other people that's on the Zoom. So if anyone wants to do a quick introduction of this of, of themselves, um, and also answer that question, if they have a, an example, it could be an example that you do or an example of something that you feel can be done. I want to invite you all to uh, share that if you have that. Is it a, a club? Am I on? Hi, I'm Michael. I I think it's beautiful. I, I love what you just said earlier. I um, think it's important to create awareness. And one of the things I do is I give a guided walking tour of Fort Lauderdale. And um, the tour is actually led by my uh, guide dog because I'm visually impaired. But it creates a huge amount of awareness for the people taking the tour. Uh, I advertise it on Airbnb, and they're aware that my, their tour guide is uh, uh, visually impaired, but I think when they get there and actually we walk through the uh, built environment, it's, it's very um, awakening, and so I enjoy that. And I tie it to other uh, experiences, including social justice. So, um, and then they usually have an aha moment where uh, they say, oh yeah, I see that in even my hometown and they could be from anywhere in the world. So I enjoy that. And I think it's a great way to, I tell everybody you should just, you know, go on Airbnb and sign up to do a tour. Uh, that's your creative energy. Uh, you know, what do you do? You know, I go, I go from here to there. How do you do that? Well, you know, I do it like this and you know, that's unique. So it's fun uh, sharing that. And then, you know, I make up stories about the history of Fort Lauderdale. I don't know if they're true or not, but people like them. And um, yeah, we just try to create awareness. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I just want to point out that I love that you brought in a different perspective, because sometimes when we say social justice, you know, we have one way that we see social justice or it's often only relating as it relates to race, um, racism and things like that. So I just love that you're bringing in another avenue for us to consider that is also a part of social justice. So thank you for that. Um, I have Narissa, she says she's not close to a mic, but love Alana's point of creative power being always accessible. So, and let's see here. So I, I don't know if anyone else is going to, um, feels like saying anything. There's going to be other opportunities, but I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity. So let's get, jump into the slides that we have here. Yeah. So I'm going to share the screen. So I'm just going to share, you know, a few slides from what we're doing. So this is what we are here today. Um, like I said, we have four lenses of social justice that we're focusing on, um, but social justice as a whole. So we have we do have a call for artists. So if you're on the call, if you're on the Facebook and you're an artist that has work that relates to social justice or one of the lenses that we're focusing on, there is a call to artists on the website that you could go and download, uh, you know, submit your art. And so we have um, the workshop, the showcase, and it will culminate into an event, um, hopefully in person, the LAD YMCA is being rebuilt um, at a new location on Cistrunk. And so, and that's gonna be a four-story building, beautiful uh, Victory Theater, 
um, black box theater. There's going to be a gallery wall. So hopefully the culminating event will be on, in person. But we'll also have um, a virtual aspect. So if you're not local to Broward County, uh, don't worry. So what this is the showcase from the workshop that we had um, on the 12th. This workshop was um, uh, featured artist Kianga Janaki, Janaki, and she led us through an art making workshop. She is a fabric artist. Um, so she did a presentation about that and led people through that. Now, even though this workshop has passed, it is still accessible on Facebook and YouTube. So you could watch the, um, the video, you could follow along. She also included a template. So if you want to create a workshop and setting it, send it in to be included in the virtual exhibition or the culminating, um, please feel free to do so. And we also had um, Patrice Walker of Emotional Emancipation Broward, who was our guest speaker. So each of the workshops will have one um, artist leading that workshop, as well as a special guest to further that um, conversation about social justice. So this is what we're doing here. The LA Lee Mizell YMCA Community Center and Nikki Lopez of What's Your Elephant presents The Art of Justice and art making as a catalyst for social justice and collective action An art making series that features social justice theme presentations, artist-led workshops across literary, visual, and performing arts, and culminating showcases that highlights the work of create, work, creating the workshops while encouraging critical conversation about access, advocacy, agency, and collective action. This program is, provides an opportunity for members of the community to create art in response to social justice themes that affect their livelihood and reflects their experience. No formal art background is required to participate. All are welcome. So where we get the symbol from, this is an Ndikra symbol, if anyone um, is familiar with Ndikra symbols that are out of West Ghana. And this symbol is, I'm going to mess it up, so Alana, please feel free to correct me. Andy Karni. Kar Am I saying it right, Alana? So this is yes. so, uh, this symbol is uh, the chief of the Indigra symbol. It's a symbol of greatness, charisma, and leadership. This symbol is said to have played an inspiring role to the design of other symbols. It signifies the importance of playing a leadership role. And you know, some may be also familiar with the ancient circle and other meanings. So this is where we pulled from to create the branding for this series. So the focus for today, for this particular segment, agency, capacity to affect change. Agency means that the individuals know their rights and are empowered to assert them. They have the capacity and the ability to voice their concerns and act on them to create a change for the better. This lens addresses how the arts assist individuals in learning how to think critically about the world and develop their agency. Equity is ensured when individuals have agency to participate in a socially responsible, democratic, and civil society. So these are one of the pieces. This is from Kianga. This is the fabric art. Now, if you don't have fabric, she has advised you can use paper, you could use paints. Um, but this is what she has. She also said that if you don't, this is just an example um, where she's taking injustice, but focusing, you know, they're purposely um, separated by color. Um, but also she said you could create your own word. So this is just a template that she used. Many followed along and some people um, created their own variation of this. The next, this is also from one of the participants and she says Injustice by Blank William, uh, Blanche Williams. So how she has it where instead of it saying injustice, she's crossing out the I-N and just focusing on the justice. Um, and she used fabric and paper. And um, so this is more of a multimedia piece. So now this is from a local artist, Stephanie McMillan. Uh, Stephanie McMillan draw, uh, writes, draws, and makes art in various mediums to express love for the wild beings of South Florida and in support of global working class led revolution to emancipate humanity and the earth from capitalism imperialism. So that's her focus of her art. So again, showing other aspects of social justice. So this is also hers, 
people and planet over profit. And this how, you know, the people is, you know, breaking through of all the injustice that's going on with corruption and all that's bad in society. Um, our family is humanity. Our home is the earth. Now, these are some pieces, um, both Alana and I are, you know, co-founders of Artists for Black Lives Matter, where people submit 12 by 12 art pieces around Black Lives Matter, positive Black images. And so these are a few pieces that we felt, you know, tied into the theme for today. So these are some um, pieces that we're going to go through here. Um, Again, all ages are welcome. You know, here is where Black Lives Matter voting. So, you know, when we talk about um, agency and access and making change, a lot of people kind of skip over the importance of voting, voting locally, voting nationally, um, having your voice heard. Uh, this is also, you know, pretty, you know, self explanatory the power fist, and uh, it's another piece submitted. And this one here is also part of the collection, Claudette Colvin. Uh, she was a pioneer of the 1950s civil rights movement and retired nurse aide on March 2nd, 1955. She was arrested at age 15 in Montgomery, Alabama for refusing to give up her seat to a white woman on a crowded segregated bus. Um, a lot of people, you know, Rosa Parks really has that claim because at the time they felt someone being a, a youth and pregnant wouldn't be the right image to use, but she's still very, you know, the, 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 the catalyst that started that change. This is also another piece from the collection, um, I Am Powerful, Truth, Lion, Woke, Smart. So this is another um, person who uh, uh, created an art piece in one of the workshops. So the next workshop that we have is coming up September 16th. Um, it's going to be focused on advocacy, skills to affect change. It's going to be led by author and poet Adijari A. McMillan. And so he's going to be showing people how to um, express themselves through words, through spoken words, through poetry. So this is going to be um, um, a spoken word um, poetry workshop. So definitely um, please check it out. And so these are just some of the dates we have so far. Um, the dates we've passed, July, you know, we had, um, uh, we had an art making workshop in reference to access equity. We also had um, today's um, workshop. Um, and then what we have coming up September 16th, that is going to be um, the workshop that Ade Jari is gonna lead. And then September 25th will be the showcase. Each of the showcase will have one featured performing artist. So um, there's also an opportunity for open mic. Um, and the next one will be October 14th um, about solidarity and equity. Um, that showcase will be the 23rd and the culminating will be January 8th. Uh, this support for this project has been provided by the following funds, the Community Foundation of Broward, Oakland Park Women's Club, David and Francis Horvitz Family Fund, and Anne Adams Fund, and the Mary and Alex McKenzie Impact Fund. So just a, a special shout out to the Community Foundation of Broward, whose uh, so financial support has made this program possible. And you could find all the details for the art of justice on whatsyourelephant.org, the art of justice. So that's my project, the art, um, what's your elephant? Um, it uses the arts to create a safe space to talk about everything unspoken. So that is uh, the slides that we have here for today. And um, just a little bit of what we did in the workshop. Uh, there were more pieces, but you know, everyone has to submit the work. So when, if you do a work in the workshop or outside of the workshop, if you email it to me, or if you fill out the call for artists and you submit your artwork, it will be included in one of the virtual showcases, as well as possibly included into the culminating event. So, um, I'm going to open up the space a little bit if anyone, you know, if anything came up for anybody, if anyone has anything to share, um, another opportunity if people want to share 
um, what they may do or may th or have a um, as, in, as it relates to the capacity to affect change. So if anyone wants to say anything in addition to that, this is uh, that space for that. I'm gonna throw in one more quick little thing. Uh, being a representative um, of the blind community, our organization is Advocates for the Blind. Uh, voice description, especially in the arts, is very effective for creating access for people who are visually impaired. I'm low vision blind. I have uh, less than 20% of the normal vision that makes me legally blind. I have probably about 2% in reality, but I can see a little bit. So I could follow the presentation pretty well, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people who can't. And there's so much beautiful art in the environment in uh, Fort Lauderdale, for, for instance, that could easily be tagged uh, with a voice description that could be accessed maybe through Google Maps or some other uh, catalog. But um, you, know, you walk into a restaurant and your phone goes jing jing, you must be connecting somehow. You could be walking by a mural and your phone goes off and says, wait a second, here's a beautiful piece of art to your right. Uh, listen to this description. And it would create placemaking. Uh, it could be an adventure for not just blind people, but for others as well. So that's my feedback on, on uh, the justice for the blind here in the arts. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, you know, if you have a program, so that was a Google slide, but if you have something that um, is helpful, I'm definitely interested in figuring that out because that's a, 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 a that's something I'm not aware of. And I'm so thank you for bringing that to our attention so we could consider that for a future program. There's an organization that, that trains um, other organizations in the voice description so that when they make any presentation, they have the skill to uh, describe it in a way. And anybody else who wants to learn that can go to this program. I'll make that available to you so you can share that. But thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Let's see here. Um, I'm checking the Facebook really quick. Um, anyone else have any um, comments, feedback, things they want to share? Okay, so let's see what here. And so, and before I forget, let me actually. I wanted to, if possible, Nikki, at some point, if we can put up um, one of the the slides from Stephanie, I think it was the one of the with the planet coming out, breaking free. I I just wanted to have that image up and see um, if it triggers anything. Just. Um, piggybacking on what Michael said earlier, I think a lot of times, you know, as humans, we navigate through this world, you know, really tunnel vision, right? Not really aware of what anyone else is dealing with or what anyone else's story is. And I think a lot of times um, we're even conditioned to think that our story is not valuable enough that we, you know, we don't have a right or we don't have the voice to be able to share our story. And if we did, that it wouldn't be important. Um, so I wanted to thank Michael for bringing that, you know, his, part of his story up that, um, you know, having that audio description is so vital. And I think it, it, it can encourage us to really, you know, use our voice. And, and I think a lot of times, you know, in the society where ve it's very like a dog eat dog type of competitive type of, um, you know, everyone's trying to climb this, you know, invisible ladder. Um, but I think if we're really able to look at the value that each of our stories have, and not only that in there's value in that story, but the freedom to want to share it with other people that there can be change. That, you know, the next time that we do have a presentation, you better believe, Michael, I'm going to make sure that we have an audio description. And however, if he didn't feel comfortable of sharing that and, and giving a part of his story, that change would have never happened. Um, so I do want to, you know, 
thank you for you know sharing that and bring that to our attention. Um, I do think it's something that's important. I asked Nikki to bring up this um, image because for me, it triggered a lot. So I know we have about, you know, there's 10 of us in here. I just wanted us to just look at it, take some time to process what it's saying. Um, and if there is one thing, just one thing that you can either identify or that really speaks to you, if you can share what that one thing is and what it's saying to you, um, whether it relate to agency, whether it relate to change, and that um, is the focus of this activity. So take your time. Let's, I don't know, Nikki, if you have any ambiance music we can give, because, you know, art is, is very um, objective. And I know Nikki went through the slide, but this one in particular really like kind of triggered me. So I wanted to just give us a time to really just penetrate on what Stephanie's presenting in this image and see what triggers come up for us. If Nikki can bring some music once she gets a chance and then we can just share, take about, you know, one to three, I see Nastasia. Yes, capitalism destroys everything. That is so true. Yes. Um, and then I just wanna, let's process it a little bit. So Nikki, I don't know if you have music, if not, yeah. Okay. So let's just take let's just take one minute. Just one minute and look at the picture, see what draws to your attention. Um Nastasia brilliantly said yes. Her, you know, perception is capitalism destroys everything. Just so, just for audio, there is a kind of like a rock a chain surrounding the planet. And it has a cartoon of like these buildings and factories on one side. And on the north side, or the top side of the image, you see birds and trees. And around the earth are arms that are interlocked and kind of holding each other together as well. I've never done it before, so I hope that helps. <laughs> All right, let's take like 10 more seconds. I see Joy says something here I'm gonna share in a minute. All right, Nikki, you can go ahead. So I see um, that Joy shared something. She said, the world is broken. And if we stand together, we can fix it. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. The first thing that I first saw it was, I just felt initially hopeless. And then when I studied the graph of the picture a little bit more, I was able to see that that red wasn't like a barrier, but it was really, people coming together and arms coming together. And then it gave me some hope. Um, that was just my initial. So if anyone else wants to share, please feel free. Yeah, I could um, share. So when I see this image, um, there's quite a bit that I see in here. So um, the part of like what's wrong with the world and capitalism and all those things, what I'm noticing is that all of the images are scattered, they're separate. You know, there's a dead fish, there's a dead bones, there's dead, you know, there's a chopped down tree, a dead bird, but everything is very spread apart. And so that, you know, when we talk about selfishness and, you know, and, and being, not being of community, you know, all of those things get balled up in there. However, that green earth that's busting through, what I see is those red hands interlocking in community, in unity, in strength, in power. Um, you see the hearts, 
you see things are together. So the, the birds are together, there's hearts, there's things intertwined. And so I feel like on so many there, you know, like, you know, as we come together and, you know, how they say strength in numbers. So I think, um, and holding, you know, and creating that foundation, right? So each of those hands is holding up another hand that's holding up another hand that's creating this uh, power fist. So I see it as coming together and I see it as, you know, being mindful of what's in the ocean, being mindful of our trees, being mindful of what's in the air, being mindful of each other um, is something that's going to give us the superpower that we need to break those chains that are holding us down. So those are some things I saw. Yeah, I love that uh, interpretation. And I see very much the same thing. I see the chrysalis almost of the uh, a burdening world uh, breaking uh, off and falling down under its own weight and the butterfly of this earth of unity and inclusiveness, um, rebirth and all those uh, features uh, just floating the colors, the weight of how that happens. It's very dynamic to me. Um, you know how when you say, um, artists sometimes go back and look at their art and blur their eyes a little bit so that they can uh, just sort of see the form and the dynamic. That's what I see. And so that graphic is very powerful. And I don't see all the detail until you described it. And then I look a little closer, I can see the hands. I didn't know those were hands. I thought mm -hmm. there was pipes of some sort, like underground pipes. <laughs> now I see that they're arms. But anyway, I, I see that rebirth, that, that letting free of the burden of our current um, society and organization. And, and down at the bottom is the fossil fuels is sort of the, the, the exploding, breaking uh, you know, the back in a way and everything else is just gonna fall off and go away. <laughs> That's what I see. Thank you. Jack Ruman has typed in the comments. He said, I see tactile human connections by the hands gripping the arms of others. And the fist, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. And for me also, I think a lot of times as humans on this journey, we see ourselves separate from nature. We're like, oh, I'm going to go outside in nature, not realizing that we are nature. You know, we are a part of that whole ecosystem. And I think the more that we see that we're connected and that we're all in this together and that, yes, we're all dealing with injustices on so many different levels, um, but if we realize that we're connecting and we're all of, in this together, that we can break free from this um, system or any system that is not in alignment of um, and creates balance within our societies. Mm -hmm. so, well, thank you. I mean, those are very profound thoughts. Um, first of all, is, uh, um, Michael, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, Nikki, as we think about the pieces of art that will be in the uh, new LLE YMCA, we always talk about having maybe a QR code that can describe the piece. So I think Michael, thanks for bringing that up. I promise you, I'll give you my word that will bring that up and finding the way to make sure that that is included somehow because the LLE YMCA and I will, it will invite you when we open, we'll have several pieces of art um, based on local artists and Nick is curating that. And we'll be very, very excited to um, really find a way to use that descriptive you know, maybe application or software or whatever that, that may be your principle to make sure that we're inclusive. So thank you. That is an example of agency. You just speaking up um, and, and really telling us your story that allows to think a little um, deeper and, and take what, it, what we can and continue to make change. Um, for me on this piece, you know, I always think that um, humans, uh, and this is what I'm gonna just talk about me, me <laughs> sometimes, things just happen in extremes and then we find the middle way. So we go and we were doing this and we go, like, oh, I'm gonna stop doing this and go to the other extreme. And then, oh, well, that doesn't completely work. And we find kind of like a middle point that actually works. Here, all I see is the hope and all the changes breaking through the regular status quo, if you will, um, in full of energy, life and dreams and hopes mm -hmm. and kind of going to the other extreme. I just think sometimes that I'm on all that that is filling up, there are still some good things that we could take along because you know technology and things 
have actually helped people live longer. They have been able to um, create some other changes that also work and help um, this world as it is. Um, so I, I see this like the birth of the whole energy and the hope coming through. And I just think in the future, there will be a point where that is gonna have to take some of the pieces that were worth um, while from the old and making some changes to be able to move uh, into the new. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to share their thoughts or triggers from this design, this picture? Okay. Mm -hmm. If there is any other of the artwork that you felt, you know, may have triggered something or the, you, you know, it pushed a button or it may have pinched you, if at this time, please feel free to share. And I'm sure Nikki can bring back up the slide and we can process it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add, because I saw, I know we talked a little bit about this. I saw on Facebook, Jamie said, love the idea, Michael. Um, she also said, social media has begun to adapt the HOH community. This would, uh, would also be a great adjustment overall for everyone, especially for the blind community. So just kind of piggybacking um, what was already said. So thank you for that, Jamie. So I'm going to stop it for now, until, unless we have something else. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Oh, oh, let me put in. So what I'm going to ask, I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to put a link in the chat. So like I said, if you are an artist or know of an artist, um, or if you want to submit your workshop pieces, um, you can submit it on the call for artists. I'm going to put it in the chat here. And I'm also going to put it on the Facebook. Let me see where. So that's one link, and I'm just going to share a couple links while we're. Uh, let's see here. Also, I'm sharing in the chat. Um, we do have a very short questionnaire, and my request is that everyone at some point. If you could click on the questionnaire and fill this out, um, it gives us a, a lot of, op, um, you know, not just information we need um, as it relates to the program, um, but how, you know, any impact, any ideas, suggestions, any feedback, um, which helps us improve um, future programs. So that's really, really important. It's a very short um, questionnaire, a few questions. So um, please, if you all are able to um, click on that at some point or save the link, um, that will be there. The other link I'm going to send is, uh, let's see here. Oops. I'm also going to share here the actual the link on the face uh, the website. So any changes, I mean, the dates are pretty much the same, but any updates or changes um, for the series, you can get all of the dates um, will be on um, that web page. So it has all of the, the links. Um, anytime we have the Zoom link available, it will be available there. So please feel free to um, save that website so you're able to uh, look into what we have coming up. The final link I'm going to send is the if you want to register for the next workshop, which will be on the 16th. And that's the one that's going to be led by... Um, Adejare. So
Okay. So those are some, a few links. I said three, but it's actually four uh, that we have here. And um, okay, so let's get it all right. So if we, I, I don't see any other comments, which is fine. You know, um, I know this is a, you know, we, sometimes we like to be able to just kind of hear and be present and process, and that's fine as well. You know, we want to, the important part is that we continue to create spaces like this that gives us the opportunity to connect, to share our point of views, to share things we're up to, uh, to give people ideas of things that they could do. Um, you know, I think everyone on here, I'm speaking on everyone's behalf, um, is really an advocate of, of creating, you know, that everyone has the ability to create change. You know, locally, nationally, all these little changes, whether you're giving money to something, whether you're standing up for something, whether you're making your voice heard, all of these things matter as we move along and try to create um, a better society for ourselves and future generations. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we have these sessions and there's a lot of people that have a lot of uh, things to say, which is fine. Or sometimes it's just like, hey, it's Saturday. We just want to be able to take in this information. So, um, so we're going to, you know, so I just want to, um, to say those, uh, you know, to share that with you. And um, if later on you want to come back and you want to add to this, this will be on Facebook. So um, under Nikki Lopez Creative, um, it should also be on um, the, the LAD YMCA's um, uh, Facebook page. This will also be available, you know, by the end of next week on YouTube. Um, and um, you're able to um, access it there. So this is just, this is a presentation. I really appreciate everyone who's on the Zoom, as well as we have a few people on uh, the Facebook and, and, and anybody who's gonna watch it later on, thank you all for watching this. Um, we're gonna be getting ready to have our feature come on and, 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 and go into that. But I just want to also, while we have each other here, is to make a request from everyone that if you could consider sharing this information with people that you know, you know share the video, um, share the flyer. Um, the more people that were able to get into the workshops and create art and create dialogue and um, the better, right? So these are all things that are positive, impactful and community building. And so um, that will be really helpful to us that you're able to share anything about the program that's going, you know, that's coming up. So um, that was, that's my little request for you all right here. So I'm going to, uh, we have a, uh, the featured, um, a feature performance and I'm just gonna, I'm just really grateful to, to be able to work with this person, um, Alana DeCasa, I've known her for years. She's my sister, she's my creative rebel. Um, we, we've shared a lot of trials and tribulations and arts and programming and everything in between uh, together. So I'm really grateful to always um, have that connection um, grow and be there for each other, our children and society. So I'm definitely happy to have her on here. So her official <laughs> little bio, Alana DaCosta is a creative rebel and her creative abilities are limitless. As an interdisciplinary artist, Alana uses various mediums as a creative community builder, artist, activist, singer, songwriter, musician, and poet. Musically, Alana's distinctive sound extends beyond boundaries as she blends neo soul with jazz, reggae, world music, and a drop of funk. As a founder of Creative Uprising Inc., her mission is to be artistically responsible for creating global change social responsibility and collective inspiration. Uh, you can learn more about Alana and her community projects and performances on her website at alanadacosta.com. And I'm going to uh, put that link in the chat and on, 
Let me get this here real quick. Also going to add it to the Facebook. And I'm going to turn it over to Alana to take it away. Hi again. So as Nikki said, I'm the featured artist and I am nervous. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to do things a little different today. I want to, being that we're talking about agency, I wanted to, um, and you know, it's just us. I wanted to make it very intimate and just, um, talk about like, why am I calling myself the creative rebel? Like, who do I think I am really to, to say that I'm the creative rebel, right? Mm -hmm. um, very young, I used to always get in trouble for speaking my truth. I, I really did not um, sugarcoat things. I was also the one that had the biggest smile in the classroom. So when um, we would take pictures our classroom pictures, the teacher would pull me aside and say, "Da Costa, don't smile so hard. You're going to ruin the picture, right? Um, so I was often the child that was loud and big and, and said what I had to say. And as a result of that, you know, always being put in my place, right? Um, well, little girls don't say that. Little girls don't sit like that. You know, um, that's not what a lady does. And it, it forced me to... Um, make myself small. But in that making myself small, I was able to find my voice and still, you know, create some noise and still, you know, pinch people in ways that they were more receptive to me doing it. Um, through my music, through my poems, um, through different images that I may um, paint, I still feel that it's my, <laughs> my gift, my right um, to really assert who I am and who I feel my purpose, what I feel my purpose is. And I'm not the only one that has that right. Each of one of us on this journey, um, I'm sure has made, been made to feel small or made to feel like their story isn't important or um, you have to do it this way or you have to look this way, right? So how do we become agents of change in all of this madness, right? We're conditioned to be one way. We, we see people, you know, climbing up the ladder to, to, to achieve some greatness. And for me, in order for us to be agents of change and see change within our social structures, we have to be willing to go through self-reflection and self-inquiry and really remove all of the layers of who we've been told to be, right? And really dig down deep and say, well, who am I, right? And what part of this was handed down to me and what part of this is really true to who I am to my core, right? And that is not an easy task. It's not something that we're even, you know, inspired or encouraged to do in the society that tells us, you know, at least for my generation, you know, go to school, stay out of trouble, get your diploma, get married, have kids, and that's your life, right? But what if you don't want that life? And what if you're looking around and you're seeing, well, you know, it's not, there's no, there's, there's imbalances. There's some people on the margins that are not having access to certain things. There are, you know, there are people on the margins or people in life that may not feel that they have the agency to create change, much less in the world, but in their own lives, right? So for me, this act of self-inquiry is, you know, a rebellion act of remembrance, remembering who I am, remembering that child that loved to like create a little trouble or not necessarily create trouble, but just get people thinking, right? That child that loved to, to be, you know, you know, um, very joking and very happy and tap into those things. It also, for me, that self-inquiry involves cultural development and building, right? Really tapping into and being aware of the culture that we're in. You know, I grew up in America 
and you see a lot of male chauvinistic ideas. You see a lot of things that are overly sexualized. So once we're aware of the culture that we're in, then we can kind of identify, well, what is culture? And how can I develop my culture? And how can I connect to other cultures, right? And how can I also preserve those parts of my culture that are valuable to our elevation as people? Now, all of this takes practice. To have to define or to be able to remember who you are, define who you are, and then assert who you are, it takes practice. And it's not an easy practice especially when you know we're living in these bodies these bodies oftentimes can store or will store all of the trauma all of the injustices all of those moments where you had to make yourself small and you couldn't use your voice the body holds on to those things so how can we create awareness of our body trauma how can we create awareness to how we see ourselves and also recognize that we're human? You know, everyone is, every human being on this planet can relate to that experience of, you know, not being able to fully express who you are or storing, you know, trauma or injustice within your body, right? We've been taught to, to um, not pay attention to what's going on in our body. We've been taught to get up and grind and grind and grind ourselves out to be a part of a system that identifies our worth and value on how much we can grind ourselves out, right? How can we change that? We can change that by taking our time to create moments of pause and space and silence to reflect on ourselves. And that's what I've done. I think it's very um, important for me as a mother, as a woman, as an artist to be very intentional with my time and my creative energy. And I try to inspire that in other people um, with my business Creative Uprising. So today what I wanna do, I wanna share a few of my pieces um, that I feel like either I was, you know, really just saying, you know, I need to be a change in my life or just really expressing what I see or expressing what I feel needs to be heard in that moment. Um, the first one that I'm going to do is Lady Blues. Now, Lady Blues initially came to me as an image. Um, and it was one of the first large scale paintings that I've ever done in my life. Lady Blues came to me in a dream. And after I painted the image and then the words came, it, this poem came to me. And like I said, oftentimes as a child, you know, I've been called a tomboy, I've been called rude, I've been called disrespectful, you know, I've been called sneaky. Um, but I think we tend to um, want to morph ourselves into things that people expect us to be and not really investigate and see who we are and develop our own characters instead of allowing other people to tell us who we should be. So this piece, again, is called Lady Blues. You been blue no 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 you ain't been blue till you've had that mood in the go you been blue no 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 he brushed up against her then within her a loud crowded room of strangers friends and families 
He stared into her eyes, then whispered in her ear, you are more than the lady I see standing here. Before she could respond, he was gone as if never there. Slowly, she felt the burns of her tears, the fear of internalized lies disguised as the expectations of who she should be, of who she could be. It was the first and the last time someone saw her clearly, the first and the last. No one hears her sing her blues. No one cares to see her wounds. No one even sees her in the room. Lady blues, unheard, tossed into the world with all the other little girls feeling unwanted, haunted by what she has been told to be, diagnosed, lost, and confused by those too blind to see, reduced to the symptoms of dis-ease, she fits their criterion of diagnosed abnormalities. Lady is too complex. Lady is too perplexed. Lady is too damn stressed to simply be. Lady is too damn stressed to simply be. No one hears her sing her blues. No one cares to see her wounds. No one really see her drowning in the room, her soul undressed. Still, what others see is skewed, a distorted perception of what it means to be a lady. Some are eager to lock her in a branded box and throw away the only key, analyzing her every move. Lady is too complex. Lady is too perplexed. Lady is too damn stressed to simply be. Questioning her intentions, slapping labels on her ass as she clings to the retentions of her sin and the pain they bring. She has been called so many things. She has been called so many, many, many things. It's hard to keep up. So she lives within and quietly continues to sing. Will you listen? Yes, so Lady Blues. Will you listen to Lady Blues? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think that's a lot of a lot of times as women, men, everyone, as human beings, where you know pressure is applied. Pressure is applied on who we should be. Pressure is not applied on us to study who we are. I believe that self-study is the best study. It's better than any book you know, any, any subject, any ology, you need to be able to know yourself so you can navigate and, you know, do this, this life experience. So the next piece, thank you, thank you, thank you. The next piece that I wanna share with you is um, another poem. Um, I'm gonna do my poem first, warming up the throat. Um, and it is a poem that is still untitled. Um, I did it in respective of fear. I think a lot of times we are afraid to tap into that power because of fear of many things. Fear of what we're, you know, we realize that, oh shit, I, you know, I am responsible for my life and I can do that. So we, we, we we're fearful of our power. And I think another on the other spectrum, a lot of times we're fearful of rejection we're, fear, we're fearful of failure, thinking that failure is a bad thing when it really isn't everything, you know, an everybody thing. We all have to fail. We all have to learn. Um, accidents and mistakes are, are things that we shouldn't be running from or shouldn't be barriers. You know, I'm not going to do that because I may, may mis make a mistake. That shouldn't be something that we are afraid of. So this one is untitled. Um, I want to share some music with it, but let me start with the um, intro first. Still learning how to navigate through this virtual world. So let me see. Ajaleo, 
and which each breath received and returned, some learn and remember who we are. Beloved children of the sun, moon, and stars, coming from far, so much bigger than our pain and scars, so much bigger. So much bigger than our pain and scars, more magnificent you are, held up by the devotion of our loved ones here and gone, rising in pure love instead of falling in it. Rising above abusive self-talk because it's not in us to quit. Cuidado, careful, you may slip. Hold on, you got grit, our life planted with purpose, rooted in divine love, sprinkled with a little dash of pain like rain. Wait, let me explain. All living things need water to grow. All living things need water to grow. Your tears don't make you any less stronger. Our life comes with purpose and it is your responsibility to nurture it. Take a deep breath. You can expand it. By the virtue of being born, you have the right to simply be. Yet, who said life would be pain-free? This reminds us of our humanity, our empathy, our compassion for all living things. This pain we carry runs deep. It's been passed down and stored as memories in generations of bodies lost and found by the strength within to keep on moving. We carry them. Grit your teeth, jump right in. Jump right in the cold healing waters of life. Here we go again, free and powerful like the changing winds. Bring bright like the sun as it rises. Take a deep breath with me. Deeply receive and return to who we are and to who we used to be, the beloved children of the sun, moon, and stars. Do you remember? Do you remember? Remember, we come from far. We've come from far. Our liberations begin when we remember who we are. So let every one of us remember. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So that is untitled. Like I said, it was based on fear. A lot of us have it. A lot of us have valid, valid reasons for it, especially if you're on the margins and no one's paying attention, right? So we have to learn how to, you know, not, um, not validate, we gotta validate the fear, but we have to, you know, face it. We have to acknowledge it, but we gotta face it. We can't dismiss it. We can't ignore it until it grows and you know becomes the elephant in the room because it will show its face. It will definitely show its face in other ways of our life. So let's see, I have a few more. How are we doing though? Let's do a check-in. How are we feeling? We're doing good? <laughs> okay. All right, so I have a few more. Um, 
let's see. Oh, okay. So this will be my last poem. And this one is entitled My Greatest Teacher. And um, I think sometimes, you know, we as humans, we take the little things, the simple things for granted. You know, like I said earlier, we're conditioned in the society to grind out ourselves, work, 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 right? And sometimes we don't even remember what we're working for, right? Yeah, we're working to provide for our family, but are we with our family? Um, yeah, we're, 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 you know, working to acquire riches and wealth and peace, but do we find moments of peace in our life without those things, right? A lot of times we take the simple things like breath or being able to sit by ocean side and hear and feel the breeze on your face. Sometimes we take things for granted like a touch, you know, hugs or words as, you know, I love you. We say that a lot, you know, now we have social media that we love and everything, we love and everything that we forgot the essence of the word love and what it means and the weight that it carries, right? So this, um, my greatest teacher has always reminded me to appreciate the little things, those things that we take for granted. Nature has always been my greatest teacher. Like a drop of morning dew resting on a sun-kissed leaf, I linger, tempted by its triggers. Oh, nature, language of love, doesn't second guess its being. It just is exactly what it needs to be in that moment, attached to nothing connected to everything, always knowing and experiencing all forms of itself, extending beyond limited understanding or gold green branding comprised of all the one. Future, past and present is the gift of being, the gift of seeing your true essence, good, bad and simply different removed from hierarchy, patriarchy, white supremacist delusion, racism, sexism, and any other ism that tries to divide with intrinsic power and time to distract and kill humankind. We must reclaim our position within this beautiful language no longer a spectator, a sideline commentator. Our actions will always crash into each other. We are connected like child and mother. What will you choose? What can you refuse? How will your legacy, your being influence the past, the present and future? What will be your mark, your signature? Is that what we're really here for? Is that what we're really here for? Take pause, study the trees, the freedom of its leaves to change and die patiently, waiting to blossom another time. The persistent waves of the ocean breeze running towards land only to recede. Not everyone is willing to live, breathe or die for a cause. Some will for applause. Some, cause the road out of hell is and long and hard. Some don't, cause they simply can't. Some will simply because some won't. What will you choose? What will you refuse can become the noose around your throat. So what do you choose? I choose love and life. 
that is a reflection of nature, a love and life that is abundant with kind gestures, one that thrives for revolution and liberation for all people, evolving, willing to grow and talk through the problems, a love and life that is real like red dirt and river water, real like moon in a hot ass summer, real like not afraid to speak your truth real, real like the love that cares when shit don't feel right real. Those, you know, 30 second reels on my timeline, that ain't real. A love that's like, I'm sorry, a love and life that's balanced, connected, that doesn't scream F your feelings when it can't handle its own. A love and life with cycles of responsible contemplation, satisfied and satisfying, courageous and brave, expansive beyond any label, beyond any look, fluid. A love and life that's clear like water, fluid like water, flowing and creative, active and constant. Nature has always been my greatest teacher. It doesn't doubt its nature. It just is exactly what it needs to be. Mm. Yes, that's my greatest teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, so. Oftentimes my poetry becomes music. <laughs> Those didn't, they became, they stayed as poems. So I'm gonna share a couple songs of mine. Let's see if I can get the music right. If not, I may do it a cappella because, you know, I'm still learning how to navigate through this <laughs> virtual world. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share um, one of the first um, first songs that I actually wrote and shared with other people. Um, like I said, as a child, I was often outspoken. But when I got into, you know, middle school, high school, I started to shut that down. Um, because I realized that not everyone can handle that, not everyone is receptive to that. Um, this song I wrote um, while working in a homeless shelter for youth. And it, it, it's called Bright Eyes. And I worked on the moms and babies floor. And being a young mom at that time myself, I was new to motherhood, it, it hurt my heart to see so many um, mothers and just youth and that have these beautiful bright eyes and I'm not talking about color I'm just talking about a, a brightness a hopefulness that they have and oftentimes you know it's it's stifled or it's stomped out of them or it's 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 you know talked out of them by others who don't see that brightness anymore or forgot their own brightness. So this song is entitled Bright Eyes. I hope you like it. Um, let's see if we can get the sound to match. Okay, no. I know how I usually do it. Hey, all right. So I start with a little acapella. There's a new lady in town with bright eyes, colored brown. Some say she looks awkward and lonely her bright eyes always seem to look around as if she wants to be found 
while she righteously sings her bright eyed melody. Give it a bop to do the day, the day, the day. Some people see the bright eyes and they turn away from she. Scared to have the bright eyes. Will keep the sea and reveal to be blinded by the ignorance of what a disordered society that disregards the presence of the most high. Yeah, she she sings. Sings. She sings. If there's ever a day I wake up and Mr. Blues looks my way, I'll say, I'm gonna have a good day today, today. And if there's ever a time that I'm trying and Mrs. Doubt steps my way, I'll say, I'm gonna do the best I can. So, Mrs. Step away. Step away. And if there's ever a day I'm inhaling and miss the law, try to take it away. There's a spiritual God given high within me, so I'll be fine if you take my sensei. Accept the truth, you are one of God's best creations. Accept the truth, you are. One of God's best creations, breaking the chains of those man-made isms that have blurred our vision. Main objective, division, making some believe that one is only blessed if he or she invests in an exclusive religion. You were given life's path, paved in perfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made in his reflection, never you can never, ever, never be less than many. Even you will question me, misguided by deception. But bright eyes, don't look away. Don't you look away, no. If there's ever a day I wake up and Mr. Blues looks my way, I'll say, Step away, and if there's ever a day I'm inhaling, oh, Law, you can't take it away. There's a spiritual God given high within me. Yeah. We must realize that our mind is created by the Most High to internalize. In his infinite gift of freedom, just open your eyes and you will see your kingdom. If there's ever a day I wake up, I'm going to wake up, Mr. Blues, don't look my way. called One Nation, and I wrote this one actually while I was away 
spending time with my father in um, Switzerland. And I want to tell you a little, a little short story about that. So um, my father for some time lived in Switzerland. I have family over there, so I go over there. Um, I've been there a few times, probably like four or five times. And every time I go, there's always two type of, or mainly two type of people that I meet. People who seem to be disgusted by the color of my skin. And on the other spectrum, people that seem to fetish, you know, make, you know, being black a fetish, right? And it, and both of those spectrums kind of, you know, weird me out a little bit. Well, not a lot of it, I should say. Um, so while I was there and experiencing this, you know, I was like, you know, we move through this life and we've created these labels and these ways to identify each other. And a lot of times we create these labels and we attach it to someone and we have a whole narrative in our head on how they should be or, or how they are based on our experiences, like for example, with black people or with Swiss people or with Spanish people. You just have this narrative in your head, right? So my dream, and it may seem, you know, I may not live to see this dream, but my dream is that one day we acknowledge our differences and acknowledge how beautiful they are and respect them and make sure that there's equity in how all of us are presented and represented and showcased and loved and, and taken care for. But at the same time, we realize that these you know, labels are social structures that we have created. And they're really on this journey of life, the most important thing is that we realize that we're one. You know, we are one beautiful nation on this earth. We're all earthlings and none of us are from Mars that came down here. And we're all on this journey together. And instead of finding ways to put people in a story that matches with your narrative in your head or put people in a category, um, we really should get to a point of where we break free of those and just acknowledge the difference, love the difference, learn from our difference and check human. If we don't really gotta, cause you know, there's no dog walking around checking no boxes. It's no tree walking around checking boxes. So the, the desire for us to be one thing or put ourselves in the box, my hope is that one day we get to a point of where we treat each other so kindly and so equitably that there is no need for a box for us to check. I understand now that it's necessary because of, you know, biases and, you know, you know, different um, levels of access is not provided to everyone. But my dream is that we realize that we're really just one nation on this planet, on this journey of life. So, this is One Nation. Let me see if I can do it right. Was the audio fine? Just so I, was the audio good? Um, towards the end of that last piece, it froze a little, but also when you have the audio, it overpowers the live voice. So as long as you know that, but yeah. Okay, I, I, so we're gonna turn it down a little lower this time. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm learning how to navigate through this virtual world. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see. Okay, so this song is I had it up, but it looked like it went away somewhere. So I'm going to find it again. Mm. Sorry. There we go. Sorry. 
Okay, give me one minute. My apologies for the technical difficulties. So let me, I had it up and then now I don't see it. So now I'm like in a panic. Oh, armpits are sweating. <laughs> Hold on, okay. That's fine. I think Gabe said he's going to sing something in the meantime. Yeah, Gabe, your turn. <laughs> Tag they your did right not. Thing. They did not say that. <laughs> oh, I read the wrong message. <laughs> All right, I had it up. I thought I was on top of my game and I put everything up and now I don't see it. So let me just pull it up again. I apologize. I hear the <laughs> delay. I was trying to get an impromptu performance from Gabe, but I guess it's not working. <laughs> next time, next time. It's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. And I think I have it. Am I sharing? The sound is okay. All right. I think I got it. All right. Sounds good. Step 
stepping Stepping away, stepping away Keep stepping away, stepping away <laughs> Yes, mm. as one, as one, as one We must remember that with all of these labels, yes, they serve a purpose, but at the end of the day, we are one. We're on this one planet. We're sharing the same air, the same water. So we need to live accordingly and remember who you are. Tap into it. Find your voice, find your power, it doesn't matter how small you think it is. Your story is important. Your piece of the puzzle is vital. So please tap in and take action. And that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. Wow. That was amazing. Beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we have, we have to get, have you on um, live and that building behind me is done and finished and the black box is there. We have to perform live and we have to invite everyone here um, to witness that. So thank you. Yes, thank you, definitely. I see Jack from said, thank you, Alana. <laughs> so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so I just wanna kind of take that in a little bit rub it all around. Um, thank you so much, Alana, for being the featured artist and just bringing it, you know, I'm just so, um, every time we're able to work together and, and produce and have stuff going on like this, it's just always amazing to me. I'm just so grateful for that. Um, I do want to open up the floor. We're, we're wrapping up, but I do want to open up again. I, I saw a few uh, other, uh, some other people popping on. And so uh, this workshop um, is a part of the series of Art of Justice. Um, and we're focusing on four lenses of social justice. And this lens, we're focusing on capacity to affect change. So um, if anyone feels like they want to give a quick intro and maybe share with us uh, something that they do, um, in their own way, using their art form, their platform, their voice, whatever, um, as it relates to the capacity to affect change. Um, I just want to kind of open that up again um, for anyone if they want to share something, either you could turn on your video or share, or you want to put it in the chat. Um, or if you want to, I see on, on Facebook, you can put it in the messenger. Um, but yeah, I want to take a, a moment to invite anyone who, or anyone who have something to say, you know, whether it's something to Alana or just in general, um, I'm going to open it up for that. I just want to thank you. You know, coming here today was uh, inspirational to me. I, I was at a men's circle last night and somebody brought up the fact that we talk about a lot of pointing toward all the destruction or breaking down of our society or what have you. But Today, this represents a flowering in our society, which I think is actually widespread that we, we don't always uh, look for. And I was made a little more aware of that last night and uh, all of a sudden today this shows up. So uh, thank you so much, beautiful job. Thank you, thank you. And, you know, and I love, you know, you, you always bring in those great points, right, Michael, because I, I, that's something that I like to kind of go back to because we do have a lot, of, we do need to address the challenges that we have to overcome, right, and the things we have to fix. Um, but oftentimes I like to uh, talk about, you know, to not just get focused and stuck there, because we all have the capacity to create that change. We all have the capacity to show up and say what we are doing as a part of what's going, what change, right? We all have the capacity. If we have a cell phone, we're on Zoom, we're on, you know, um, to create the things that we want to see in the world, to create the things we want to highlight in the world. And that's something that we are, um, we have the power to do that. So, you know, when people, oh, I don't want to see this on Facebook. I want to see that okay, what do you want to see? Put it up there. You got a cell phone, you got a camera. You don't even need a professional camera nowadays. People are creating movies 
with the cell phone that goes in their pocket. So there's really no excuse for us. It's just really a mindset. And sometimes people need other people, right? Every time we build community like this, you know, you give someone an opportunity to say, oh, wait, I could do something and they do it. So sometimes we may have an idea, but we don't have the motivation or we feel like we don't have the skills or we don't have the this or we don't have the that, you know, and do it with whatever you at, wherever you're at, however you, you know, can bring it out, you know, you have lighting, you don't have lighting, you have good sound, you don't have good sound. It's about getting that message out. So I really want to just kind of underline that because I think um, we can't say that enough that we have the power to put the things that we want to see out there into the atmosphere. And it also helps us to connect to others, right? You saw this and you're like, hey, wait a minute, I'm showing up. That's my jam. So as we share these things, it's not about oh, this is what I'm doing, but it's like, well, yeah, this is what I'm doing, but we also get an opportunity to connect to others who are interested in these and building their voice and building together and showcasing that. So yeah, thank you. That was a very long-winded thank you, but. <laughs> and, and I wanted just to add to like, in the midst of all this change, and, and being agents of change, we have to remember that we also have to hold on to our joy and our happiness and our pleasures and our moments of connection. I think it is, sometimes people think they have to be, you know, they have to be militant or, you know, just don't care, you know, don't care and do nothing. And there's a, there's a medium, there's a happy medium to where you can, you don't have to be militant, but you can be active and active, you know, agent of change in your life, in your family, in your community. and go from there and at the same time find moments of you know being joyful and creating joy and creating happiness and um i think that balance is so important um and we need both you know we mm -hmm. we we in order for us to really you know create change we have to rest we have to um you know be be willing to tag team and say i'm resting tag you're it right and have someone that we can kind of um, know that there are, you know, team members. That's when to add that piece. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what um, uh, Patrice talked about in the workshop, because she does emotional emancipation Broward, the power and the importance of resting. You know, we just can't just keep going and grinding, grinding. That's, that's a part of self-love, that radical self-love is taking that rest, taking that nap, taking that time off, no matter how big or small our project are, you know, but especially if it's big, that just means we need bigger rest time. <laughs> you know, sit on that beach, do nothing, breathe it in. Absolutely. So, so anyway, this has been a beautiful, wonderful Saturday. You know, I know there's so many places that we all can be, and I'm quite sure Saturday for some that's rest day, that's laundry day, that's, you know, play the kids day, they catch up on chores. Um, but it's really, I, I'm just really grateful that you all chose to spend the Saturday with us. Um, oh, I see room. Too much of what I'm doing was touched on here today for me to even begin but invite me back. Thanks for this, Nikki. Talk soon. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jack. I'm glad you're able to um, be here. I, I don't know, lot if you remember, Jack came to one of our Artists of Black Lives Matter. Um, I do remember Jack. Yeah, Ed was Beatty. So yeah. it's awesome to see you here. You. Yeah. Yes. And, and feel free, like, catch us on the replay. So feel free to continue to share the video and, um, you know, all of the other previous showcases and workshops are available on Facebook and YouTube, right, Nikki? Yes. Um, so you can always watch again. Hi, Jack. You can <laughs> always, you know, if you feel like now you inspired and you do want to create a piece, create a piece. You have four lenses you can focus on, um, solidarity, access, agency. Uh, There's one more. <laughs> This one more. Uh, advocacy, access, agency, collective action. Collective and action. Also, and equity plays into and all of those. equity is the umbrella, like creating <laughs> equity. So it can fall on any category in our society that you feel needs to bring, be brought attention to. Um, feel free, you know, to share, 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 or catch us on the replay.
Mm-hmm. And, you know, and those are just the focus. So, cause sometimes like I had one artist says, I don't know about the, you know, these lenses, right. And it's just a focus, but it's under the umbrella of social justice. So I don't want you to get caught up in, it has to fit those focuses. Of course, if it does, it just reinforces what we're talking about in each of these lenses. However, this program is about social justice. So it can be any aspect of social justice. So um, I see some, I know some, there's some writers in the room. I know there's some dancers in the room. You know, it doesn't have to be a visual piece. It could be a written piece. It could be a little video. Um, it could be sitting in your chair doing little arm moves like a lot. Of- <laughs> Maybe we could get Gabe to do a song. I'm I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Not that I know that Gabe before, but <laughs> and again, you're, you're so right. I mean, this is kind of an experiment mm-hmm. um, because this uh, curriculum that has these four lenses actually was written for um, schools and to work with kids, not with art. And you know, Nick and I were looking at it and I was like, you know what? That looks like a cool idea to just use, that's just one lens, one way of looking at things that are obviously in relation to social justice, many. So this is just one invitation to um, share it through that. And, and again, it's just an experiment to bring that um, because it was broken down into pieces that for some people might be easier to kind of work instead of the whole idea of uh, social justice as a whole, but it's just, just one point of view. Yes, and as we wrap up, because I do see Sharir Gree, I don't, um, we're on here. Uh, she's an amazing writer, and I know I'm, I, you don't have to get online, but she is also going to be one of the performing artists at one of the featured performing artists of one of the lenses, as well as one of the guest speakers. Um, is it in October? I think it's in October. So definitely you want to stay tuned. Um, If you go to LAD YMCA on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see the information. If you go to uh, Nikki Lopez Creative, um, just listening for today, no problem. But I just want to like, you know, give you a little shout out. (laughs) Amazing writer and person and artist and advocate in many ways. So she's definitely someone if you're on the social webs to check out her stuff. She does workshops, a lot of literary workshops and things like that. So yes, October. So, um, you know, keep in touch. If you go to the whatsyourelephant.org slash um, the art of justice, you'll see it or just go there. The link is there. You'll see all the dates. You'll see links to register for the Zooms. They're going to be Zoomed to Facebook. So you can watch either way. You can watch it on Facebook. You could be on the Zoom and be a part of the conversation. Um, also, if you have the link, you know, the link, the registration, uh, the uh, the questionnaire, please, please take some time and fill that out for us because that helps us to um, fine tune the program um, and fine tune what we do, um, you know, and and get feedback, right? You know, this is all about community. Um, If you see something that you said, hey, you missed out this, or hey, can you consider this? Those are all things that we're open to. Um, Nikki and Alana, I love you both. I live my name every day, living, laughing, loving, and always showing kindness despite negativity. Stay blessed, queens. That's joy. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So I, I'm going to wrap up. This has been wonderful. Um, I hope you will to see you all on the next go round, the next workshop, the next um, showcase. And I'm going to say have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Do that.